Speaking of everyone's daddy, Trump is back, boys. And honestly, it fucking... Oh, Ten God, I love it. I love it. Let's watch. And welcome to Hannity. And tonight we are broadcasting... We went from Edinburgh to Edinburgh. From the South Texas airport, we're only a few miles from the U.S.-Mexico border, where for the entire hour we will be joined by the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump along with the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, and we'll also ask the president about some other questions, other issues of the day. But of course, Donald Trump, no stranger to the southern border after his predecessor, Barack Obama, left him with an absolute mess. President Trump, he made it his top priority to secure our nation's borders. And that means enforce laws, protect our sovereignty, protect our borders. He restricted asylum cases. He stopped Obama's disastrous catch-and-release program. He instituted what was known as the Stay in Mexico policy for new migrants. He negotiated deals with several Latin American countries to expedite. Dude, they want him to be back so bad. Like, they're, they're like, I get it. Like, I get where Sean Hannity's coming from. Like, he wants him to be back so bad. And there's two different reasons. For me, Maybe it is today, not because of start. ratings. Because my ratings are better since Trump has been gone. Better than ever before. Let's be real. I genuinely miss him. And I think Sean Hannity genuinely misses him too. And then there's also on top of that a financial imperative. Like for a lot of the media, they want him to be back because all of these other fucking, all of these other conservatives are so boring. And all these politicians are no, so I'm boring. Had the when it's business as usual politics, it's not me. sexy. There's not enough to fill... A 24-7 news cycle. Donald Trump is a content machine. So that's precisely why CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, right, they've all awesome. suffered. Their ratings have gone to shit. And that's because they don't have their Trumpy back. So, like, I think Sean Hannity uh, both loves Donald Trump, like I do, okay? Like, has a personal admiration for his dumpy, like I do, Okay. It's like, I, I just, I have sexual urges when I see Donald Trump. He's just so hot. Um, but then also, uh, Sean has sexual urges as well. He wants to suck his toes. But also, he likes the ratings too. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm excited. The deportation of illegal immigrants. He successfully built nearly 500 miles of new border wall. And this is important because he told migrants around the world, do not come to America illegally. He was very clear. Don't make this dangerous trip. Don't send your children unaccompanied. Okay, I don't care about this stuff, okay? I, I don't care about this stuff because it's like, uh, you know, who gives a shit? Uh, I, I want him. I don't care about you, Six times. Fred Flintstone looking motherfucker. I want to see Donald Trump. Joe Biden has never visited, not once. Just think about that. Now, tonight, we're here of the crowd of great Americans, including many friends of... President Trump. I see my friend Louis Gohmert is in the crowd. Congressman Billy Long, he is here with us. Governor Abbott will join us on this stage. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Look at this guy. I mean, look, how, how can you not love American politics when we have characters like this dude, okay? Like, th this is actually like, this dude is straight up we didn't an voice. alien that you would have in Star Wars, okay? My man is built like a goddamn Jabba the Hutt looking character. This is like half a year boy. This is what it I looks like when you are building a human out of hamburger meat, but it's really hot out, so it starts melting, okay? It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome, dude. It's great. Does he have a five dollar bill in his on pocket? On the stage, but first, I didn't even realize what's going on there. Welcome Did someone back. give him an IRL dono? First, joining us right now, right here in South Texas, the forty-fifth president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. So, are we judging people on how good politician is by looks? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But in a positive. Way. Big crowd. 
<laughs> he looks good. He looks good. He like slimmed down a little bit, you know? Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Look at him. Look at him. He's so happy. He's so happy to be in his crowd in the zone, dude. Look at that. Can Joe Biden do that? For doing huh? job, Sag. Can Joe Biden walk up a ramp like that? I think not. I think not, folks. Can Joe Biden tell you the that it's the top of the hour cringe. and there's a 60 second ad break coming right now? Can he? Don't miss that. Can Joe Biden inform you? That if you want to avoid the ads, an ad-free broadcasting experience, all you need to do is subscribe. Either for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Thank you, Phil Aesthetics, for the 5 one gift subs. Can Joe Biden tell you you Seven can use months. an ad blocker Thanks, or a VPN? Probably not. Eight months. Paul no matter is what you soon. believe, the ad break still comes for you. Here's the ad now. Pussy blunts with the seven. Thank you. Okay, I just had one minor complaint. I did not get that reaction when I came out. It's actually funny. Look at them, dude. They're in such. This is such a Dr. Rom. Thank you for the five. Dr. Rom gives us such a jovial Let's mood go, for Keep both of them. Work, bro. Also, look at the look at the state police APC back there, dude. Texas DPS, like they're flexing their they're flexing all their toys. They're like, he wore a This is what hat. you get if you he come here illegally, like migrant. Thank you, Mr. President. Great to have you. Hi, Sean. Boy, you know, I guess one question. Um, Thank you, Anika if I Bonk. Ask this crowd, uh, do you miss them yet? I think I know the answer. Do you miss me yet? <laughs> From so the question I have before we even get into this, I mean, I miss them. You know that. You know that already. I miss them so much. I want to kiss them. Okay? But the question I have for this uh, crowd always is like, what specifically do you hate about Joe Biden's policies? Six months. No that ads, makes you hour. want Donald Trump to be president again. What has Joe Biden done? Or what areas has he not done enough in that cause you to want Donald Trump to be president again? Because I know people get mad at me for this. I know that like there are neoliberals who get mad when I say this stuff, but ultimately, this is a question I always have them. for Republicans. Like, why don't you just vote for Democrats? If you just want like lower taxes and deregulation, why don't you just vote for Democrats? The difference between the Democratic Party is that um, you, dude. they unironically do believe in austerity, okay? Uh, they, they do. They genuinely do believe in austerity. Um, they're going to implement maybe minor tax increases, maybe, maybe minor tax increases. And also on top of that, you don't get the uh, extra racism spice. And that's it. Like, people won't call you a racist. One more month until our child enters the world hassle. And with, with respect to, like, Joe Biden, who has done a decent job in certain areas, like, for example, um, pushing uh, for a solid recovery package through budget reconciliation, I need, people to I need people to tell me, identify, and tell me why that's bad, okay? I need Joe Biden voters to, or Donald Trump voters to sit around in a circle and explain to me why it's bad that, uh, you know, the Democrats are trying to push for a, a fat infrastructure package, okay? And I need them to describe to me why Donald Trump would be better. There is absolutely don't scoot, don't scoot, no don't scoot, shot. Don't scoot, don't scoot.
that a Republican would be able to tell me that Joe Biden so far has been worse than Donald Trump for them Look at the top without of utilizing just random culture war talking points like, I, Mr. Potato Head, no longer has a wee wee. I need my Mr. Potato Head to have a fat hog, veiny, juicy, thick. September 9th, I need to think about Mr. Potato's cock. Gary and I were skating at a hospital or, uh, on top CRT, of brother, critical racism theory, brother. That's what I need. I need... Uh, I need Donald Trump to come back and, and finish uh, CRT. It's like... Purina helps my dog. Like how does good. that impact your life in any meaningful capacity? What do you think CRT is? What do you think Joe Biden has done personally with respect to critical race theory? Like, what is critical race theory? If you say Joe Biden is going to take our guns away, what has he done to take your guns away? Donald Trump, unironically, in the first four years of his uh, presidency at a certain point tried to implement red flag laws and got bump stocks banned. So right now, I mean, we're still in the beginning phases of the Biden presidency, but he has done more Welcome back at to, to ban certain parts of, of guns, basically, than, than Joe Biden has. Okay. W zero o o o o o zero o zero o zero o zero four months B. If you're gonna tell me that Joe Biden uh, is doing critical race theory by, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, defunding the police, then I need them to describe to me exactly how Joe Biden has defunded the police or even advocated to defund the police when he one got a cop to be his vice president and two literally ran on. Increasing the police budget. I'm not saying Joe Six Biden and Donald Trump are the same. Chat. I fucking love but it. But it is always wild to me when I hear Republicans talk about how poor of a job Joe Biden is doing. When they're, he's doing exactly what they would want him to do. It's just like the, the seasoning is different. You know what I mean? If Joe Biden was like, we're increasing police budgets, Jack, because these blacks are unruly, then everyone would be like, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. But he's just like, we're increasing police budgets, Jack, because they need training. And then all the neoliberals are like, yes, this is great. Oh, my God. Thank God. And all the Republicans are like, I hate this. But ultimately, police budgets increase. Donald Trump moved the uh, American embassy to Jerusalem, which kick-started a lot of the uh, final iteration of the Palestinian-Israel uh, uh, massacres uh, that Israel engages in against Palestinians, okay, in this iteration of the apartheid state in Palestine. Okay? Not like Joe Biden moved the embassy back. It's not like Joe Biden was like, yeah, that was a bad move. That was a misstep. We're going to roll that back immediately and normalize relations uh, with uh, the region, in the region, and, uh, you know, scale back on the amount of money that we give to Something Israel to unconditionally. He didn't do any of that. He increased weapon sales to Israel. So the only difference there was that, uh, you know, Donald Trump would say, Palestinians are dogs, they're going to die. We need to give all the weapons to Israel. We need to give all the weapons to Israel, folks. And Joe Biden's like, Come on, Jack. We got to stay out of this. We got to stay out of this issue, Jack. My sub and then has got she. Keep pumping funds into Israel and also keep uh, selling them weapons. So, so what's up? Hi, Chad. It just makes no sense. Anyway, having said all of that, let's uh, let's. They even even if you're going to talk about like uh, you know nepotism nepotism liberals love talking about nepotism virtually uh i think there was an ethics committee there was like a bipartisan uh ethics uh, committee slash group of individuals that were really upset genuinely upset with the nepotism happening in the trump administration they recently uh put out a report i can't remember where it was i was reading this i, I can't remember the name of it where they talked about how 
virtually every like single Joe member Joe of Biden Joe Biden's cabinet has family members in lower levels of government now. Like, everybody does it. Everybody does it. Any idea? I flew blown. But let's get started. Yeah. One, the day you and Melania Trump came down that escalator, you talked about securing our country's borders. You had to fight hard to get the money to build 500 miles of wall. Yeah. To stay in Mexico yeah, policy. You built the wall. You ended catch and release. Now we see what's happening. Your reaction to all of it. Well, there has never been a better time six months ago, and there's never been a worse time. We had the tightest security. You could come into our country legally. But you know what else we were stopping? Massive amounts of drugs, human traffickers, bad, bad people, criminals. They're emptying their jails into our country. You know, this is categorically false. Under the Trump administration, whether it was because uh, QAnon was interfering with sex trafficking investigations or not, I don't know. I mean, I know they were, but not to the same degree that it would like uh, uh, hurt their uh, overall operations or whether because most of their focus was on uh, nonviolent, uh, non-criminal immigrants. They were just simply living within uh, U.S. borders. But under the Trump administration, less sex traffickers were caught than any other, than any other administration. Uh -huh, cat. Straight up, if you look at the numbers, the Trump administration caught less child sex traffickers than any other administration. 13 months in Bo King Poggies. President Biden has had harsh words with the Trump administration for his approach to government ethics, calling it the most corrupt administration in modern history. I've said this before, like, it wasn't that Trump's administration was the most corrupt administration in modern history. They were just not good at hiding I'm the corruption the and didn't you. really care. Do you understand? That's the difference. That's the difference, boys. Okay? They just didn't care and they didn't, they didn't try to hide it. They just did it out in the open. Other countries are emptying their jails into our country. We never had it better, and now we've never had it worse. In the history of our country, I just saw, we were with the governor, the lieutenant governor, we were with Ken, we were with a whole group, I think the largest contingent of Congress, Congress people ever at the border, from what I understand. I think they're mostly here too, by the way. I see them, a lot of them right in front of me. But we had the largest, we have the, we even have Doc Ronnie, right? So my doctor in the White House who became a congressman. By the way, so, Ronnie, would you mind giving Joe a cognitive test? Uh, <laughs> President Sippy Cup, I don't know how well he's going to do, but anyway, I won't get you in trouble he with these comments. Him, we, uh, we aced it. I think I can say that I aced it. Did, did he get I love that. Literally, I know three people that died of COVID last winter. What the fuck's he saying? One, he didn't get one question wrong, did he? 30 out of 30. 30, out of 30. Wow. wow. You, you have such a big, beautiful brain. I have such a big, beautiful brain. I aced the cognition test. Come on, dude. That's so good. That's so good. I actually don't know how Hannity can talk so clearly when he has Donald Trump's entire dick, ball sack, and asshole shoved directly down his throat. It is wild that you can hear the clarity still. Yikey. It's wild. And the boots. Okay? Oh. And they Mr. President, you were so good at acing your cognition test. Biggest brain. One, boldest yeah, you brain. It did get a little more difficult after you got by 15, I would say. But I, I heard the first three questions are, it's is it a giraffe or an elephant, right? Well, you know, that's what the fake news does. They take the first two or three questions yeah. and they put that and they put them in. But let me tell you, they would not get those last 15 right, certainly not the last 10, that I can tell you, but anyway. But we have, uh, we have a border that's very bad right now and very dangerous for our country. And uh, fortunately, we have a lot of great people in Texas, in particular, the job... 
You know what's fascinating? All of a sudden, Biden is blaming you I know. for the current crisis. And for well, misinformation. They've done it for five years, six years. Russia, Russia, Russia. And I told you the story. I told Sean the story. I'd go around, people would say, Sir, do you know anything about Russia? This is what I'm running years ago. I'd say, no, no. A month later, do you know anything about Russia? Another guy comes up, sir, do you know anything about it? Then I get a call from him, do you know anything about Russia? I said, what's going on with Russia? Love from the and Midwest. it was the Russia hoax. Appreciate that was misinformation. Right. Now they're saying it was the Republican Party that wanted to defund the police. You hear that, Billy? <laughs> Billy's not a big defunder of the police, I can tell you. Wait, but the Republican Party actually did advocate to defund the police. If defunding the police means cutting funds to, uh, or cutting the raises that cops were going to get, like the increase in the police budget, because that is what that means uh, in the eyes of Republicans, the then yes, Democrats actually wanted to increase funding to the police and Republicans wanted to decrease funding to the police because they never wanted to pass legislation that, that increased spending. I've been so the irony is that months, but I've been the, following your the irony is YG. actually that nice Republicans did do this. Awesome lefty the Republican Party stuff. wants to defund the police. This just started yesterday. I don't know how they're getting away with that one, but all you have to do is, you know, the good thing with you, you take the old clips. There's no I, getting I, away. I played the greatest hits last night, sir. Yes, <laughs> I, I played them all. You know, when you, when you look at what else is happening, too, and it's interesting that states like Florida and South Dakota and I know I, many others, they're offering Texas and Arizona support now. That's right. And their law enforcement, because in the dark of night, they're taking Asking. illegal immigrants, flying them into these states, and now the states are responsible That's right. for food and shelter and health care and education. They can't and afford it. And the states it. don't even know they're coming. They bring people in and the states don't even know. They say, here, you're taking this. It's an allotment. It's called an allotment. And the governors, Republican governors are, by the way, you look at the well-run states, it's all done by, for the most part, Republican governors. All of them, in terms of crime, in terms of everything else. No, we have great Republican governors. We really do. So the, the policies that have been reversed, Joe hasn't come to the border. You've been here many times. Kamala really... Like, dude, I love that they were so adamant about how symbolic and empty of a gesture it was that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez went to the border and went to a detention center and cried. And now they're crying that they're not doing the symbolic and empty gestures of going to the border. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It is the best thing. It is the best thing that could have ever happened. Okay? Four months. Brilliant. You yell at Chad Pogo. He didn't come to the border. It seemed like a photo op to me. What would you want them to know that they don't know, or maybe they do know and they don't seem to care about? Well, Kamala wouldn't have come if she didn't hear I was coming. Oh, I was true. invited by the governor. I'm gonna come! Are you saying it? Kamala wouldn't have come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> and I said yes. And I said yes, to my honor, because we were very proud of the job we did. Nobody's ever done the job that we've done. We built over, now I guess it's close to 500 miles of wall. And we were going to build an extra 200 because we had money left over. We were going to do an extra 200. Mm -hmm. And nobody's ever done this. And all he had to do is go another two months and the wall would have been totally completed. And by the way, they have to paint the wall. I'm going to give that job to Brian. We have to paint, great congressman. We have to paint the wall because it's starting to rust. It's supposed to be painted. And they don't even want to paint the wall. It's so disgraceful two more months, Four months. dude this type this type of like aesthetic stuff is so good because like you do see the rust on the walls and you think like yeah he's right he's right we should paint it we should paint it like he's he's right and it's also the type of stuff that a republican would care about like, the wall straight up does not stop any drug trafficking okay one, because you can use slingshots or, you know, tunnel under it. But most importantly, because drug trafficking does not happen uh, across the border Silly via, Trump. like, uh, illegal entry through border crossings. 
97% of all drugs trafficked into the United States comes from regular ports of entry. Okay? And this is something I've talked about a million times over. So the border wall, you can say wrong all you want, but it's the truth. It's actually the truth. The overwhelming majority, if not nearly the entirety of drugs that is trafficked into the United States, get trafficked through regular ports of entry. And that's not just, that's not my numbers that I made up in my, oh, you know, libtard brain. These are numbers that are coming from the Department of Homeland Security. And that didn't change under Donald Trump either. It's not like they were giving out and different information under the Trump administration. No. So... So that's that's the brilliance of the wall because it it pretty much does absolutely nothing and it's purely symbolic. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. There are a lot of areas that uh, that that go over uh, Texas land, which Texans are not even happy about. That's the that's the part of the wall that uh, we don't really Ten talk about. Good. Texans love having their own land and and dominating their own land, right? There's big chunks of the border wall that would have to go over Happy three months. the land that Texans own, which when? is quite the controversial thing. Yeah, eminent domain, baby. There you go. <laughs> I love that Republicans refuse to fix infrastructure Unless it's something that is purely symbolic, Jack like a stupid wall that doesn't prevent hand. anything. And painting that stupid wall that will do absolutely nothing. Like the only... <laughs> we have bridges that are crumbling all around the country. We have dams that are in a state of disrepair. And Republicans are like, hell yeah, paint that goddamn wall red, white, and blue, brother. I don't care how many billions it uh, will spend on it. Like if we're, if Democrats were like, we need to be painting this wall and we're going to paint it rainbow colors in honor of the LGBT community members that we love. Okay. In honor of the, the, the trans uh, Guatemalan that's like escaping violence uh, who will look at that rainbow and be like, Oh fuck, I can't come in. I don't want to be, uh, I'm not allowed to be in this country. We hate Love you. you Ajahn. You're like a big brother to me. Keep doing what you Republicans do. would lose their minds. They'd be like, this is such a waste of funds. It's a waste of funds. Liberals would be on board. <laughs> and Sammy. Anyway. MS-13 is gay, brother. We don't want them. We don't want them gay criminals coming in. MS-13, you know what that stands for? Male sex 13? You better stop that now. You better stop that male sex from happening. Okay, let's keep going. Everything would have been completed, and they said, just like with the Keystone Pipeline, they're not going to do it. 48,000 jobs out the window, and an environmental pipeline, much better than other forms of transportation for the product. So it's it, when you look at what's happening and inflation is going to be the killer of them all because inflation is going to destroy our country. The border is going to destroy our country. You know that? I want to get to all of that. Let me Wait, how could I wonder how we have uh, such inflation now? I wonder how we could stop inflation. Hey, has he if only there was well. a mechanism to control inflation. Um, Oh, wait, the same Fed chairman under Donald Trump was routinely warning about inflation after our uh, endless quantitative easing uh, policies. But Donald Trump wanted to keep interest rates as low as humanly possible for the duration. Bitcoin? What? No, I'm not talking about Bitcoin, man. So, again, if we have a... What Bitcoin? 
Raise the interest rates, baby. Let's do it. I don't care. Anyway. So, um, everybody's like, hell yeah, you're right. Inflation is crazy. And then, you know, uh, it's unmanageable, brother. It's like, okay, uh, why did that happen? And uh, also, I mean, it's not even just Trump, by the way. That is a consistent policy uh, for every single uh, president. Uh, that, that has just been our monetary policy for the past 30 years, 40 years. Well, not 30, 40, but you know what I mean. So, of course, you don't care. Yeah, it's because uh, it's because I'm rich. The rich actually love higher interest rates. You're right. That's what the that's what the wealthy are advocating for. And to uh, in an effort to curb inflation, increasing uh, interest rates. It's a uh, Anyway, let's keep going. If, if Donald Trump, and we had a hard time getting video. There were even congressmen, and I know Louie was part of it. I know that Senator Ted Cruz was down here, and, and many others. I, I'm not ignoring a lot of you. And I know that... If it wasn't for them, they wouldn't allow our cameras in the new cages they were building yeah. for kids. Yeah. Now, in 2018, they accused you of putting children in cages. It turns out the video was from 2014. Right. You were not president. Now, Joe Biden is building these cages in the middle of a pandemic, high rate of positive cases of COVID, yep. kids living on top of each other. Imagine for a second, what would, it, what, what would the press have been like and Democrats been saying if you had built these new cages, which they're building all over here? But I really had that because in 2018 and even after 2018, they came out with these horrible pictures. And somebody came up and said, well, it was the contractor. He said, but I built those cages in 2014 during Obama's administration. And it wasn't Trump. It was Obama that built those cages. Got a little bit lucky. And after we said that, all of a sudden, the whole cage thing went away. But now they're building them again because there's so many kids coming in. And, you know, many of the kids are on suicide watch, something we've never heard of. Think of that. It's so miserable. It's so hot. It's like hell. I mean, I just walked, I will say, although right now I think it was hotter in New Dude, those kids were so happy under Trump, though. Like, those kids were literally the happiest when they were... When they were being detained under the Trump administration's uh, detention centers, as a deterrence policy, when they were being separated from their mothers and fathers and other family members that they crossed the border with, they were like, oh, man, I poggers, poggers. I, I love uh, being thrown into a prison cell away from my uh, only uh, family members that I trust. New York said it was in Texas. It was 101 degrees in New York. Again, it's like, dude, how can you say this? It blows my fucking mind that he, this is basically Obama built the cages version 2.0. Okay. Obama built the cages. Well, you use them and now you're getting mad that Joe Biden is using them. I don't understand it. Aren't you also saying that our borders are overfilled? That people are coming in? Like, it makes no sense. Make this make sense. This was like, I got here, it was like, cool. But um, their kids are on suicide watch. Think of that. Sad. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing. Look at 90% of the heroin crosses that southern border. Yeah. Now fentanyl, we've had the two biggest fentanyl busts in the history of the country. We're losing over 300 Americans a week. Wait, I'm confused. Isn't that a shout out to Joe Biden then? Like so under the Joe Biden administration, we had two of the biggest fentanyl busts. Yeah, 85% of the fentanyl that came across the US-Mexico border in 2017 entered through the San Diego port of entry. Yes, I already mentioned this. The overwhelming majority of drugs 
that came into the country has historically always come in through regular ports of entry, not over the border wall. You would not be able to transport that massive amount of cargo with by by tucking it under the the bags of uh, abuelas. Okay, that's not how that works. People make it seem like they're just like oh yeah, it was just like a bunch of a bunch of Mexican. Uh, uh, Old ladies are just like shoveling coke into the country or something. Some cases more. It's the worst thing of all. A sheriff no, just said at a meeting we had, we had a round table, and these sheriffs are incredible. The law enforcement in Texas and other places. Agreed. Are so incredible. Thank you. And he said, and I didn't even know this, he said, for the end of our administration, we had fentanyl vir virtually stopped. Now he said it's coming in at levels that we've never seen before. We had it stopped. It was very tough to get. It was nasty. Getting through our border, especially with almost the 500 miles of wall, it was nasty to get through. And these people, and I gave them the right to stop people. Now they're not even allowed to talk to people. You're not allowed to we talk to people. Arrest. But again, people coming in is bad. Prisoners and real serious criminals of the world, murderers, Walking in, I'll never forget, I'm watching, of all places, CNN, okay? This was a short-term watch, and they had a reporter. Whoa. No, this is before. I well, can't hear you. What did you say? Oh, no. <laughs> well, now their ratings are down 79%. This was, <laughs> but true. I'm watching CNN, and a woman reporter is asking, what did you do? What did you do? It's a very famous lip. And this guy looks at her, murder. She said, what? Murder. And she immediately, they cut it off the camera. Come on, dude. Come on, come on, come on. Is I will destroy you a Turkish meme? What? Uh, I don't know. They probably mean like your pussy or something, Amaranth. Like they're probably saying like, if they're saying it in Turkish, I mean. Anyway, um, the Turks are gonna wild. They're gonna lose their minds now. Now that you said that, Amurant, dünya ahiret bacımız Amurant. Burada arkadaşlar. I said Amaranth is our uh, worldwide and, uh, and and forever. How do I explain budge? Budge means like uh, a woman that you defend. Like, it's not like your immediate family member, but like someone you respect and defend. <laughs> that was the end of that. But we have thousands of hardened criminals. Like, we don't even have in this country, practically. MS-13, we took them out by the thousands. You know, I told the story just now, we had the border. The three countries primarily, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, MS-13 and other criminals were coming out and they wouldn't take them back in the Obama administration. They refused to take them back. This is like, all of Can this I is a lie. The Obama administration deported more than the Trump administration did, even in its first four years. Okay? Part of that was because of border crossings being designated as Happy deportation. Okay? That's what increased the numbers. But also, the Obama administration, the biggest difference between the Obama administration and the Trump administration was their hyper-focus on, uh, on, on criminal immigrants. With immigrants Fake that uh, had, uh, had a record or had done a crime. Trump expanded on that to include undocumented immigrants living in U.S. borders, no matter how long they've been here, doesn't matter. Uh, he wanted everyone to get deported. He wanted to use ICE as a deportation force, kind of like the Gestapo, and focused on every single person. This is the legal difference between what Donald Trump did and what Obama did, okay? He also, while simultaneously saying that, like, uh, you know, Obama is not doing enough or Joe Biden is not doing enough to deport immigrants, Has. he keeps saying how much they're deporting immigrants and how much harm they're causing to undocumented immigrants. It literally does not make sense. It it physically cannot be these two thoughts you can't have inside of your mind at the same time. Crossing the border for the first time is a civil offense, so anyone caught isn't guaranteed counsel. 
They would have planes on the runway, so when our plane would want to land, they couldn't land. They would stop the buses. And I said, well, do we pay these countries any money? They wouldn't take them back at the beginning of my, the three countries. I, mean, I know the heads of the three countries, they're smart. They're very street smart dictators, okay? But they're very street smart people. And I like them, they like me, we get along, but you know, it's like uh, business is business. You know, they're evil. Austin Abbey contradicts himself, lol. Wait, you think I'm contradicting myself? Or you think, um, or wait, why, why did I click on myself? Is triggering or you think Trump is contradicting himself? Looks good. Because that's what Trump line. is doing. He just keeps contradicting himself over and over again. And it doesn't make any sense because, like, on the one hand, he's talking about how Logan's senseless voice. the brutality is towards immigrants under the Obama administration. He built the cages. He built the cages. And uh, Joe Biden did uh, right now. Oh, the kids are in such bad situation. They're suicidal. They're suicidal. While in the middle, he's like, but they're not doing enough. Like, what do you want? You want him to fucking directly murder the kids or something? Like, is that what you want? And I am all the way over here on the left, on the leftmost side that you can be, where I think both of those administrations have been incredibly reactionary towards undocumented immigrants, right? So I think both are bad, okay? One is also aesthetically worse than the other. Bad, bad Trump, good. But both are bad across the board. There are minor differences or marginal differences in between the way that uh, either administration has dealt with undocumented immigrants, but those differences Four lead to drastically different check. outcomes for the people on the ground, certainly. That is not something that I will uh, say uh, is, is insignificant. Those are definitely significant changes for those people living through them. But ultimately, both are still doing a lot of harm, except Donald Trump is looking at that and saying... No, it's good when we do it, and it's bad when they did it. But they're not dumb. I don't know. They're not. Look, we got along. I said, how much do we pay those countries? $500 million, sir. But what does that have to do with it, sir? It has everything to do. Don't pay anymore. We didn't pay. And then I was called. Stop paying. No, it's called. We stopped payment. You ever hear the term? We stopped payment. And we stopped payment. And then the next day, I get a call from all three. President, you stop payment. No more money coming into the three countries. I said, that's right, you're not taking your criminals back, but we would love to. Nobody asked us properly. We would love to take our, we would love to take MS-13 back. They are wonderful people. I said, fine. We sent them back by the thousands. They took them yeah. by the thousands. But nobody's ever done that before. Nobody ever did it before. Do you have a theory, an idea? Because I, I, I really can't think of one, except that you know, I, I think in years gone by, I would argue that there were Republicans that wanted illegal immigration because they get cheap labor. And I think that Democrats want to provide something of great worth, which would be amnesty, yeah. citizenship. And you have rhinos. You do have rhinos. Look, the rhinos. There's a lot of rhinos out the there. Rhinos sometimes, I may say. It, the rhinos of these people. You don't have any rhinos in this room. We got our. <laughs> we probably have. 45 congressmen here Trump and women. My favorite uh, you don't have any rhinos in this group, but you have rhinos. I call them weak Republicans. They walk into the White House. I've been watching for four weeks now. They walk in, they meet Biden. He doesn't know what the hell's happening. They meet Biden, he's sitting, <laughs> and they're talking about yeah. infrastructure. And finally, they walk out, they have a deal, and the deal is a cr terrible deal, but it's a deal. And it sort of reminds me of England a long time ago. We have a deal. We have a deal. You remember the deal they made with Germany? Not yeah. too good. That didn't work out too well. What? There's, if I don't understand what he's Country saying, there's Trump. no shot his stands get what he's saying here, okay? What is he even talking about? He doesn't mean Brexit, I don't think. Does he mean NATO? Like, what is he referencing? Appeasement? No, dude. He's not talking about appeasement. No shot. Are you guys serious? He is? Wait. These people, you don't have any rhinos in this room. We, got our, <laughs> we probably have 45 congressmen here and women. Uh, you don't have any rhinos in this group, but you have rhinos. I call them weak Republicans. They walk into the White House. What the hell's happening? They meet Biden. He's sitting. <laughs> And they're talking about yeah. infrastructure. And finally, they walk out, they have a deal. And the deal is a terrible deal, but it's a deal. And it sort of reminds me of England a long time ago. We have a deal. We have a deal. You remember that? 
absolutely 0% chance Trump knows what appeasement is. Has buff, has buff. Okay? No, I, I refuse to believe that appeasement is a concept that exists in Donald Trump's mind. You guys are unironically crazy TCS if you watching. think he knows what it is. The deal they made with Germany, not too good. That didn't work out too well, right? But they reminded me, they, they walk out, we have a deal, we have a deal. And it was the typical names. There were a couple of good ones in there. I don't know how they got roped in, but they walk in. Yeah. So they have a deal. And then Biden canceled the deal because the radical left said, you can't make that deal. That deal's no good. We want None of this is true, by the way. From the point of view of like what actually happened, I've moved beyond whether it was appeasement or not. Uh, and he's comparing Biden to Hitler or not. Uh, but what he's talking about is literally not true. What Joseph Robinette Biden did, which was a very smart tactical move, in my opinion, was to say, hey, here you go. I gave you your bipartisan deal, Jack. And then we're also going to do a simultaneous reconciliation uh, package. And I'm not going to sign it if both aren't there. Both aren't on my table. Okay? Now, that was hustle, hustle, too hustle. powerful of a move. That was too alpha of a move for uh, Joe Biden. Let's be real. Which is precisely why he turned around and, uh, and reneged that offer to the progressives. Yeah. Because that was going to be something for the progressives. That was a way to shut the, uh, the, the annoying uh, moderate centrist Democrats up, the, a way to show, like, bipartisanship. Dan and and now, uh, and then also get his, uh, his, his larger infrastructure package through uh, budget reconciliation. Now, we'll see what actually happens. I don't know what's going to happen, but Trump is saying that... Trump is saying that he went back and he just lied to them or whatever. I don't think so. I, I, that's not true. I want to spend $6 trillion. Well, and they most would do of it, it they would backdoor everything they didn't get. My friend says reneged is a racist term. Is that true? What? It comes from negation. Negative. Fucking Dono Hassle, everyone. Your friend is a fucking idiot. Russia, 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 Pogo. No, it's not renegotiation. Reneg can also mean like, I, I, I don't even think it's uh no, reneg doesn't mean renegotiate. To go, it's, it's to go back on a promise or a commitment. So you're wrong. It's to revoke. In the deal, they yeah. would backdoor through the reconciliation process. Well, we need better leadership at the Senate level. You need better leadership. We need somebody better than Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Guys, Love English is my fucking second language, dude. How? How are we here? From Latin, negare, to deny, plus re, so to de-deny. Okay, that's why I said it comes from negation. Reneg. One yield. Mitch McConnell can no longer do the job. When, when you, you know, it was a very difficult process because I was covering it every night, and that was the Congress was not assisting you for the money for the border wall. It's not sure for renegotiation. Please stop which was a signature promise that you made yeah. in 2016. But you found a way to get the money and build the wall. So what I did is I got a big military budget approved and I took it out of the military because the way I look at it, this is defense. I spent two and a half years winning lawsuits. We won all of the lawsuits. There were 11. We won every one of them. I started building the wall. It's two months from completion, and this guy stops it. And that's tragic, and it's dangerous for Texas and Arizona and every other state. It's tragic. All right. All right, we're broadcasting from Edinburgh, Texas, right near McAllen, and I'm joined on stage former President Trump and Texas Governor Greg Abbott. All right, this is a town hall. We're going to have some questions. Ma'am, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. What's your first name? My name is Janet Brown, and I live in Edinburgh. Welcome, and thank you for being with us. What's thank your question? You. Um, I am Hispanic, 
I am, I actually came from Nicaragua, Central America. I'm very familiar with Central America because we, we, I lived there two years in Honduras and the rest in Nicaragua. I came to the United States in 1960. So I won't tell you my age. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I came here legally. And uh, it is really... Which means, uh, I mean, I don't, know it, I don't know exactly the time frame she came here. But it could, one, mean that uh, at the time there was a more... Um, there was a there was an immigration policy that was uh, more, I guess, humane, where you could easily come to the United States of America. Two was a CIA asset, okay, and very easy, very clearly worked with the CIA, uh, and from a regime that uh, the American State Department was fond of, or as a refugee. AKA CIA asset. Begging you, please, Force three was just super. rich as fuck, which also pairs up with, uh, you know, America's State Department interests. So that person turning around and uh, shitting on the rest of the uh, immigrants, shitting on the rest of the immigrants coming in, and she is pretty light skinned, so it, it, does, it does make sense. But for, for that person to turn around and uh, uh, talk doo doo about the other immigrants coming people. in is, uh, is, is for a deliberate reason. Let's keep really going. sad. And by the way, colorism in uh, Latin America is also as profoundly important as it is here it's in the United States. Anniversary and the and Trump it Hall directly is stems from judged. colonialism. Brother. The whiter you are from Latin, Amer from Latin American countries, the whiter you are, uh, the, the more pure your bloodline is and the Thanks closer the you can trace it back to whatever the, the uh, European colonizers were that uh, took over that land and genocided the indigenous population and enslaved them. So just remember that. Hogwarts it means you're closer to being a Spaniard than, uh, than being like, um, what's the proper term? Is it mestizo or, or the proper term being like indigenous? The closer you are to uh, 12 being a colonizer ago. rather than the, the, uh, the indigenous population. For those of you who don't know, that's where that comes from. To see what's going on at our borders here. Mestizo is half, sorry. The question is, President Trump, what long-term damage and destruction will Biden's open borders agenda do to the country, and what is it costing the law-abiding U.S. taxpayers? So it's a, you know, very fair question. And I know you know that answer probably as well as everybody in this room. It's incalculable how bad this is, where you have not hundreds of thousands, but millions of people storming into our country. Some of them, as we discussed, are from prisons and they're bad and they're murderers and all of the things that I said before. It is, there's no way to judge that kind of damage and you know getting them out is a is an ordeal and all sorts of things will happen it's going to be very hard but i will say this it has to be stopped now this can't go till 2022 they all say oh we're going to win congress this can't go they have to do something immediately people are storming up you look at some of these caravans where they have 15 and 20 and 25,000 people and you don't know who's in those caravans and dotted in those caravans are some of the worst people on earth so it's a tremendous cost and it's also monetarily a tremendous cost you're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars Sean can I add to it yeah Janet actually cost significantly more to if you were to build Proper housing or reappropriate uh, hotels or, or, you know, vacant houses or homes or whatever in certain parts of the country to, you, um, to integrate and, and build like orientation programs, I guess, for undocumented immigrants that were coming over the border and seeking asylum in the most empathetic and humane way possible. You would, oh, one, baby. create more jobs, two, be able to revitalize certain parts of the American economy, and three... Uh, ultimately, it would cost significantly less to to do that rather than uh, to do that rather than uh, you know prosecute them as though they're criminals and uh, put them through the system.
And what's happening here is the erosion of the social fabric of the United States of America. The United States of America was built upon the rule of law, and what the Biden administration is doing is not enforcing the rule of law. The first thing that happens for all the people they're letting in, they know they're getting away with violating the rule of law that will erode the United States of America. Up, it must be stopped. I agree. I agree. I agree. Let, me, let me pick up on, and thank you, ma'am. Thank you for calling. I don't know, Governor, if we should take it personally. It wasn't Viva Us, you know, just Tim. Wait, we'll just leave the stage and it'll be all Trump. <laughs> Let's talk a little politics. You're up, Governor, in, in 2022. Um, I like President Trump. I'm open with my opinions. All the fake news journalists, they say they're objective. We know they're not. Uh, they have an agenda. But you've done a great job for the state. Wow, I support your, Twitch, your nomination wow, as the president has. House. I guess wow. the question is, let's talk about 2022. Really good chance you will be reelected. The House could turn Republican. And then we look at the states where Senate races are. I don't think it could be a bigger bellwether. Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, New Hampshire. Uh, we have Ohio, Wisconsin, and Arizona. Those are all states we're very familiar with. How important is it for Republicans to take those key Senate races? So I think without weak Republican rhino leadership, you'd win every one of them. Everyone. But dotted in there are people that you almost would say don't like this country. They don't like the Republican Party. I mean, this is just, again, a personal branding project for Donald Trump. Uh, the way he's talking about this is specifically like uh, trying to draw battle lines within the Republican Party as uh, either you're pro-Trump and a real Republican or you're anti-Trump or kind of questioning Trump's uh, power and you are uh, anti-Republican, right? The real Republicans are the ones who are Trumpers and the fake ones are money. those like Liz Cheney. And therefore bad. Rhinos. This has nothing to do with like actually winning elections or anything like that. That's it. He's just he's just setting it up for himself, basically. That's all he's doing. Nice with strong report, Republican leadership in charge of those states, you'll win every one of them. Without that, you won't. Governor, I'm going to give you. This is your last segment with us. What it, what it means to you to be the conservative governor of Texas? Open borders hurts workers and wages. Not sure why you are such a big fan of them. No, open borders do not hurt workers and wages. That is an absolute lie. Okay? Thanks for streaming. There Sorry, is no finite amount of jobs available. Side face. Economy scale. You. Open borders are only hurting workers and wagers, wages because of the two-tiered immigration system in this country. That creates, uh, that creates a, a, a constantly refreshing pool of labor that you can uh, basically work for near slavery wages. That's it. No more top of hour. Okay. That's the difference. That's the... The real issue is not undocumented immigration the real issue is actually having a two-tiered immigration system and a constant pool of of basically slaves that uh, american corporations take advantage of and because there is a constant pool of immigrants coming into the country to work uh at these at these horrible conditions the top of the hour ad break still comes at the top of the hour and of course, uh, there's a way to avoid said ad breaks, but that is not by shutting down Obama immigration in its entirety. Obama amnesty. Obama amnesty. Logan PS do wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Yeah. Another way that uh, you can avoid the ads is by subscribing, whether it's for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, or, or with an ad block, or a VPN, but here's the ad break now. Anyway. Six months subby poggers. As I was trying to say, the real problem isn't immigration. The real problem is 
not allowing workers to organize, and not allowing undocumented labor to be documented labor. That's it. And that's precisely why we are significantly more brutal to the undocumented immigrants that come into this country than the corporations that hire them. If you truly wanted to end undocumented immigration in this country, you would punish the corporations that hire undocumented immigrants. But that would impact their bottom line tremendously. Our, agri our agricultural production heavily relies on migrant labor. Our food production, uh, like our, our processing plants, heavily rely Hassle. on undocumented labor. Okay? So if you actually wanted to put a stop to it, if you like wanted to go full Nazi Germany, has, has then the way to do so would be by punishing corporations that hire undocumented immigrants. Not, not through E-Verify either. Like actually, straight up, punishing the corporations, not with just a slap on the wrist, but straight up by, by punishing them and even, uh, even putting them in jail. Months but you won't do that. And the reason why the American government won't do that is because our two-tiered immigration system is built in a way so that we can have slaves. That is the truth. 26 months me and uh, Aviva Chomsky uh, has covered this subject extensively. She wrote books about it. Uh, I forget what her book was about uh, that, that pairs up America's immigration policy with capital owners and their interests Trump, under dad, capitalism. Noam Chomsky's daughter one of uh, his daughters. Hassan Nazbal arc? What? I'm just going to ban fucking moronic baboons that say shit like this. My advocacy Asshole. never is to stop and shut our borders down and... and Never let undocumented, Im undocumented immigrants in here. I don't want to be like Japan, dude. Okay? Oof. I'm an immigrant, you fucking idiot. I like immigration. Fifteen months of watching the hogs with Asian. Listen, even in Texas, remember this, Texas is also the state of people like oh, Beto O'Rourke. And so what we have in this... <laughs> Hey, Craig, golly, it's Workers shouldn't be penalized, though. Innovation is necessary is to progress opinion? like no, Elon and Bezos honesty. wish to accomplish. Love Immigrants you. are given stuff they do not deserve. We must protect America's sanity. <sighs> Dude, do you think it's funny... Like, do you, do you think this is a this is a funny meme when you do stuff like this? Do you want me to ban you permanently? Is that what you want? Let's go, Pepela. Here you go. Here, have have fun with your permanent ban, you People fucking hate. idiot. Yeah, I know it's a troll. It's a nine month subscriber who's like, who's spamming the same shit over and over again, and then. Outsiders that come into this Looking community will look at that and be like, Hassan is destroying, like, uh, he's trying to create an echo chamber. It's like, no, I know what that person's actual worldview is. And he's simply stating idiotic points of view, specifically so he can get a rise out of me. And then I'll go on a tangent about how stupid that is. No immigrant has taken your job. You were laid by, off Uncle by a capitalist who took man. advantage of that immigrant to increase their profits. Nothing makes the capitalists happier than you blaming the immigrant for your job loss. Yeah. What we have in the state of Texas it, it, is, is, is a battle for the soul of our economy. Are we going to be capitalists or are we going to be socialists? We've seen the socialists. Get yeah, dude, it is so socialist to make sure that uh, no one, and I mean no workers, 
can organize in the workplace, let alone like fucking own the means of production. It's actually the most socialist thing to do. Yeah, driving labor costs down at the behest of capital owners and and uh, uh, hurting workers at the behest of capital Happy owners months by driving you, labor costs ass. down and destroying benefits and not allowing workers to organize in the workplace is the most capitalist thing you can do. The way that our immigration system is designed is the most capitalist you immigration system you could possibly have. agenda through Beto O'Rourke and Julian Castro and people like that, Texas must prevail. We must keep Texas capitalism. Let me tell you this last thing that Democrats will not, and that is, it's been capitalism, not socialism, that's lifted more, lifted more people out of poverty than all of the socialistic programs in the Now give me that. Now give me that number without China. Whenever people say that, ask them, do you think China is capitalist? They will say, no, it's socialist. Then you will ask, then you will, uh, you know, urge them to give you the numbers uh, where we have lifted people out of poverty uh, globally without China since it's a socialist state. Just ask them. Mustard has chud. Yes, sir, three months. Here's to the world. We're not going to let the socialists take over now. No, I'll say this about Texas. And it's so telling. If you take a U-Haul from California to Texas, it's about 2,500 bucks. If you take it from Texas back... Can you stop saying you're an immigrant? It's not much harder to say my parents were immigrants. You were born in New Jersey. I'm literally an anchor baby, you fucking moronic, idiotic, tofu is vegan ass dipshit. I'm sorry that, uh, you know, I literally came here when I was 18 years old. An immigrant from where? New Jersey? Yeah. I was born here so that I could have an American citizenship. I love, love that that's like not enough, dude. Can you please stop saying you're an immigrant? It's not much harder to say my parents were immigrants. You were born in New Jersey. Like my father didn't even have love a fucking American inside. citizenship until literally two years ago. What the fuck are you talking about? My parents were immigrants. He hates America. Yeah. God damn, dude. Vegans, is this the best you guys got? Oh, I guess that's sort of different. Oh, Hi. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was your fucking lack of knowledge that led you to have such a fucking asinine statement about my immigration status from where you were standing. No, here's what you're supposed to say. Instead of saying, oh, I guess that's sort of different. You're supposed to say, I'm sorry for acting like I know more about your actual life than you and implying that you are somehow lying about your background that's what you're supposed to say if you want to avoid getting banned for having such a fucking moronic take in the chat hassle 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 also eat some fucking meat i guess because you know i don't know it, it seems like uh, your synapses are not firing i already ran the ad chat stop saying call on three high Ajan. Well, I guess that's sort of different okay I gave you enough time to like uh, apologize but uh, doesn't seem like it's coming so have fun your chatters will literally be like Chatters will be like, I know about your personal background more than you, dude. Like, that's crazy to me, dude. That is actually crazy. I know you lived your life, 
but I actually know more because I Googled it. Back to California, it's about 300. You're doing <laughs> U-Haul a favor. Now, I know Texas is very inclusive, but if people are gonna come from California and New York to Texas, I think it's fair to say they need to leave their liberal policies that destroyed their states behind. Fair? Fair enough. Governor, we always love having you. Thank you for Thank being you, with Sean. us. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. All right, when we come back, we'll return uh, a few other questions for President Trump, non-border related, as we continue our town hall. Thank you for being with us. Oh, my God. All right, as we continue Hannity on the ground in Texas tonight, we continue with the former president, Donald Trump. What a great crowd. We don't have a lot of time, but let's talk about your future plans. Now, I have a funny... Let me ask the crowd of everybody here, would you like to see the president run again in 2024? You're not going to answer, but I have to ask. Where are you in the process of, or have, let me ask Remember, you. Remember, chat, when you get sad about how many claps and how delusional this crowd is, remember that they all, every single person in this room, voted for Ted Cruz. Okay? Texan conservatives are a whole different like kind of loser. It's just like, it's, it's not something you can compare to the average uh, person. They are gigantic losers. They're pathetic. They're cucks. They don't even like the aesthetics of like a macho man who's like a real American, you know? Born and bred, baby. Did you see this? Without giving the answer what the answer is. They voted for a like guy minutes ago. who ran away from uh, rolling blackouts Go to Cancun, and when, when he was caught in 4K, turned around and blamed his, like, six-year-old daughter. Nothing says Texan conservative uh, and, and uh, a, a firm belief in American values like bravery and patriotism, like voting for a guy who did that. Have you made up your mind? Three. Yes. I think you got it right. <laughs> yeah. When you look, you know, it's funny because I've known you 25 years. And I remember when you first. Please stop calling my family losers. I mean, if they're Texas conservatives, they're fucking losers, brother. I'm sorry to tell you that, but. They are. They literally are losers. If they voted for Ted Cruz. They're, you're a fucking loser. If you voted for Ted Cruz, you are a loser. I'm sorry. There is no way to manage that, okay? I was talking about running, and we actually argued. Remember we'd argue about certain things in Iraq and, and certain wars and everything? And then you became president, and I remember when I supported you, I said, I, I said he will govern as a conservative, and people didn't understand. You really governed I mean, as conservative as any president in the modern day. Which I appreciate that. that is your core belief. And actually, so you have known me for a long time, and my views have never really changed. I mean, I've, if you look at my views, my views haven't changed. I felt this way about these crazy endless wars where we're losing so many wonderful, young, beautiful people, and we're not fighting. We're just sort of there, and we don't do it. You know, we knocked out ISIS. You saw what I did during a short period of time. Sure. Over a period of a year and a half. Wiped out the out caliphate. ISIS. No, wiped out the caliphate. It, it, was, uh, it was getting worse and worse. But we got to bring our people back home. It's time. 21 years in Afghanistan. Yeah. 21 years. And so uh, we rebuilt our military. It was totally depleted. It was, it was terrible. We had jets that... It's depleted again. It's depleted again, folks. Awesome. Totally depleted again as soon as Biden was in office. 
He said we're spending all the funds on teaching them critical race theory. We're 40 years old, jet fighters that were 40 years old that they didn't make parts for anymore. You had to go to the desert to get the parts with what they call the airplane graveyards. And we have now all brand new planes, brand new everything, all made in the USA. No, we have to get, we have to get ourselves set. We have to reorient. But uh, the Middle East has been a disaster for this country. We've spent trillions and trillions of dollars. We got nothing. And the beauty was we didn't need their oil anymore, but now we're going to need their oil again because we're not going to be energy independent we're not very now. long. You're, we're ready. I don't believe we are now. And you're, you're, when I left, it was $1.87 a gallon for gas. Oh my God, and now it's God. three and a half. It's a, almost $1.30 more yeah. just since Joe's gotten to be president. Let me ask you a question. Because I would argue, and I did argue. I wonder, I wonder what happened, dude. It's okay, Anjan. Just stop reading chat. We are so, dumb. It's almost like there was something that happened that, uh, you know, people weren't buying a lot of gas. Uh, they weren't really I'm interrupting the news today. Driving I'm around. To tell you I made to Ramasa for the first time ever. It came out super good. And now gas prices have, like, become normal myself. again. Dang hugs in the chat. Tofu. I just, I can't think of what it was. Probably Joe Biden. It is actually in a really, in a, Trump is in a really hard uh, situation here because like, Yo. the recovery is built in, right? Like reopening the economy, even if you didn't uh, uh, add significant investments, as soon as you reopen the economy, even if you didn't vaccinate Yo. people, if you just reopen the economy, a lot of people were going to be happy. They would probably die because of COVID because there were no vaccines, but they would still be happier automatically. Like, so Biden has always had a built-in mechanism where his approval rating was going to be significantly higher than most other presidents. And that's precisely why he's trailing at like 65% for a long time, which is why it's harder for Trump to make arguments against Joe Biden right now. It's, it's kind of hard for Trump to make arguments against Joe Biden because nine months. Joe Biden's in a pretty good situation being the president after Donald Trump and also being the president while the American economy reopens. Wow. You know what I mean? Argue on air often that you treated there's a whole other standard for you. If you had sons that lied on a gun permit, threw a gun in a dumpster, uh, smoked crack, uh, got money from Ukraine with no experience, Kazakhstan no experience, Russia with no experience, a hundred thousand. Dude, you're literally sitting across the podium. Has right hassle has right hassle from a right guy who has had right no experience. Right hassle has right hassle and became right president. Right hassle has right hassle and his has cabinet right was has full right. of people who famously had no experience, including. Jared Kushner, who was supposed to facilitate peace in the Middle East. Like Hunter Biden isn't a part of the Biden administration. Has Judd, has Judd. Yes, was he was man. a recipient of nepotism, certainly. These people all trade with their family name. Almost a year and the now, Biden the administration, as I already mentioned, enjoying this stream. Keep up the good stuff. Herself. Certainly has a lot of that same kind of nepotism that exists within the administration, but not to the same degree as Donald Trump. How are you, how are you going to make a, a, a morally consistent argument here? $1,000 shopping spree and a $1.5 billion deal with the Bank of China with military connections. I have a funny feeling that the media would go after you. It would be unrelenting. Why does Joe Biden get a pass? Uh, the Democrats get a pass. Hillary Clinton got a pass. The Democrats get a pass. You look at a guy like Bill Barr, they said they're going to impeach him. And once they said they're going to impeach him, he became a whole, he became afraid. He became afraid. I said, what's wrong with you? He became scared. They go after people. They go after him so hard and so viciously. And all of a sudden, that's what happens. Not in all cases. We have some people that are incredible. But you have some people, they get brought over to the other side for fear. And we can't have that. We have to, we have to fight 
So so look at me. They go after me with Mueller, with this one, with that one, with impeachment one, impeachment. I call it the impeachment hoax one and two. And all of this old nonsense, made up stuff. In fact, they were the ones who were guilty. They come after me. New York radical left prosecutors come after me. You got to always fight. You got to keep fighting. It's a disgusting thing. It's very unfair. I guess they don't call politics a blood, blood sport for, for no reason. If you move forward, you know how difficult it is. But you seem ready to re-engage in, in that battle. And when you It's not that I want to. The country needs it. We, we have to take care of this country. I don't want to. Is this fun? Fighting constantly, fighting always. I mean, uh, it, the country, what we've done is so important. When I say the greatest tax cuts, now they want to raise your taxes. They want to double your taxes and nobody, and the Republicans in the Senate and the House, but the Republicans in the Senate have to fight hard that the taxes don't get up because that'll be terrible for the country. I, I've known you for years. I've watched you for years at Trump Tower. I watched you all the years you were in the White House. You sleep maybe four hours a night, four and a half, five max. Um, you never stop working. Joe Biden averages less than one schedule. Wow. Boys, this is, a, this is a brutal interview. Sean Hannity is really asking some tough questions here, man. <laughs> I wonder how Donald Trump will get out of this one, dude. <laughs> It's like, it's like, how is this? I mean, this is a suck session. He straight up golfed more than any other president. Like, come on, oh, dude. Come on, dude. That is nuts. Ten months just schedules event before. today. He gets up at 9.30. He gets his warm, milky, and sippy cup around 7 p.m. If he's good, he gets a night-night story. Now, in all seriousness, we yeah. saw what happened at the G7 where he just was paralyzed. You see what happens, how he struggles to communicate. I asked you, and you kind of punted the last time you were on. Eight months. Do you That's see a fun. cognitive decline in Joe Biden? And, and what does that mean to America? So let me say it a little bit differently. He is surrounded by vicious people that are very smart, but they don't stand for the values that the people in this room stand for. These are very smart people. I mean, he didn't campaign against me. He didn't debate well. He didn't make good speeches. He hid in the basement. I watched him on the State of the Union get up and speak. And it was terrible. It was, I don't want to go into that, but it was terrible. It was a terrible, and I thought he was going to get killed. And I had to watch your competition just to see what they were saying. Now, FDR was a great speaker. You remember some of the speeches he made were incredible. And the only thing you have to fear is fear itself with that beautiful. Sure. They compared him to FDR. Okay. <laughs> Now, the good news is they've lost You should have ratings. been watching Hannity. That was not what was no, happening. No, I on know. This. I watched that. Well, that one I could have predicted. <laughs> yeah. But no, but look, Thank there was so nothing good. It was embarrassing. And they were comparing him to FDR. Now, it was so embarrassing to watch that. I couldn't believe it. I was surprised. I watched specifically because I said, he's going to get killed. He didn't get killed. They said, great. And Nancy was sitting behind him with the single biggest mask I've ever seen. That was a, that was the largest. It covered her entire face. I've never seen anything like it. No, I've never seen anything like it. I've got to wrap. And she didn't up. rip up his speech either. Like she did with you, Rip. I got to wrap things up, dude. He's like, he still wants to keep going. I, I love this man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hannity is a Trump weave for sure. Actually, a Trump weave. Uh, so here's some good now, news about now that we saw Donald Trump. Here's some interesting news about Donald Trump. Now that we saw him personally, Donald Trump's actual Trump organization, which is closely tied to him as a person who he didn't even divest uh, in or put. Uh, in a blind trust uh, throughout the duration of his presidency is now uh, is now uh, facing charges on tax evasion um, for Trump. 
uh, facing charges of tax evasion for perks that they offered uh, some of the uh, some of the higher level executives there that uh, were not taxed appropriately. Here, let's take a look at what's this going on. That bombshell development in the investigation into former President Trump and his company. The first charges stemming from that probe filed overnight, and our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl, has been tracking all the latest. John, good morning to you, my friend. Good morning, Michael. ABC News has learned that a grand jury has filed sealed criminal indictments against the Trump Organization and its chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. And Mr. Weisselberg has already turned himself in this morning to authorities in New York. This morning, after a two-year investigation into Donald Trump's business dealings, the first criminal charges against his company have been filed and are now just hours away from being revealed in court. Sources briefed on the investigation tell ABC News the charges against the Trump Organization and its longtime chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, include tax fraud. Weisselberger has worked for the company since the 1970s. In one of his old books, Trump said of Weisselberg, quote, he did whatever was necessary to protect this video. Please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>